This is the cheapest iPhone that I could find on Amazon. Today we're going to take a look at its features and decide whether it's truly worth buying in 2023. Some people believe it to be the affordable iPhone and others think it's just a terrible outdated device which isn't worth buying. It's the iPhone SE and no, it isn't the mini square phone that you knew a few years ago. Sorry iPhone 5, you were great while you lasted. Instead it's a slightly bigger iPhone which imitates the design of the iPhone 8 and includes something you've probably not seen in a while, a home button. I know right, amazing. An actual kind of clickable home button. Who knew that Apple would take a leap of faith and release a device that looks like a 4 year old phone but performs like a modern day iPhone. The features of this phone are broad, so let's start off by first talking about the design. The design is basic, it follows the pattern of the 6, 7 and 8, but instead of a metal back, it features a solid glass back. This looks more cleaner and glossy, which is the trend of the last few iPhones, but the 7s from my experience tend to last longer because of the aluminium frame. Despite this, it shouldn't be a reason not to buy the phone, since every new iPhone feature a glass back despite it being stronger. The 4.7 inch LCD screen is tiny in comparison to the latest iPhones which come in the sizes of 6 inches and higher. This not only makes it less enjoyable to use, but the phone itself is a powerhouse for its price price and it can't be utilised with such a small, poor quality screen. You can probably tell by now why this is one of the most cheapest iPhones you can buy today. The rear camera is a standard 12 megapixel screen and the front is 7 megapixels. Despite the rear supporting 4K video, portrait mode and depth control, it lacks a feature which has become increasingly popular over the years, the ultra wide. There's no ultra wide option which is really sad to see since it could have easily been added into the camera but knowing Apple the price would have also likely become higher. Although there's no ultra wide, the main camera does still perform decent in photo and video but I'll let you guys be the judge by showing you these next few clips and photos that I took with the phone. So I think it's safe to say that if you're not buying this phone to take the best photo an iPhone can take, then you should be good. All of those Instagram photographers out there, I'm talking to you. Don't buy this purely for its camera. Anyways, the main reason this phone gets any sales at all, the software and specs. The small device features the A13 Bionic, which still performs well even today, alongside the internal storage reaching up to 256 gigs with 3 GB of RAM. Now you know why this phone is really popular. It's a phone for those who want an iPhone to increase productivity, but don't feel like they really need to buy the the latest so instead they buy a compact capable phone which is able to handle all of their day to day tasks. It's a way for people to reach in and have a taste of Apple's amazing ecosystem at a wonderful non costly price. Yeah maybe they could buy a second hand version of a later phone but if you're someone who purely needs your phone for the few tasks you do such as calling, texting, emails and they all need to be done with speed then this phone wouldn't be too bad at all and in fact would perform quite well. A reason a lot of people may look down on the phone isn't because of the aesthetics and how it looks identical to the iPhone 8 because the iPhone 8 looks beautiful but it's also because they don't think the specs are all that great. Just because they aren't as good as the newer phones, it doesn't take away from how good the phone actually is and the speed. It shouldn't be a reason to turn away from the device entirely. If you're just an average iPhone user who doesn't edit all day long, who doesn't game all day long, then this phone has the power to last probably another 2 to 3 years. I'm convinced that if you gave this phone to the average user, the only thing they would need to get used to is the size. I've also seen a few older people out there, not too old, maybe in their late 30s, who have bought this phone and have had no issues with them. When you ask them, their core response is that it works fine, it's cheap and therefore they're able to do everything they need to do. When it comes down to it, I'd say it's the people who don't really use their phone as often and only need to complete certain tasks daily that should buy the iPhone. Or if you're someone on a really super tight budget and you really want to get to know Apple's ecosystem then the phone is worth buying. That being said, it's not like the phone performs terrible when playing high end games. It's 100% capable for that. It's just a small screen which is a prominent barrier for gamers. Overall, under $200 this phone is definitely worth the price and I recommend it to all of you out there who are on a tight budget and just want a fully functional standard iPhone that will last you a while. Thank you all for watching, if you enjoyed make sure to drop a like and subscribe. Comment down below your thoughts on the iPhone SE and whether you'd actually use this as your main or backup phone and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.